Amen. Ephesians 1, verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the work of his mighty power. You know, most of the time when you listen to people pray, it's usually they got future in it. That's kind of interesting. But they're asking God to do something. Like, you know, God bring revival, you know, or, you know, pour out your power or touch your people, you know, oh God, strengthen this or do this. Oh God, I believe you're going to heal me. Interesting. And here you have this guy, Paul, I believe it's Paul. He's saying, I want you to look at this. That the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Nothing future about that. Nothing out there. It's about knowing him presently. Amen? His word says that we were healed. Past tense. See, that's how Paul prayed. He paid, prayed differently than what we're praying. You know, we're asking God to do something, and God's already done it. And you don't realize you're doing that, and then you're going, well, why isn't he answering my prayer? Because he's already done what he's accomplished. Amen? Paul's prayers were not about future, but what about God has already done for us? He is asking that God would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And that revelation is in the knowledge of Him, of who He is, what Christ has already done for you, not what He's going to do. Ouch. I know I do it myself. I've done it, prayed that way. Believe in God for revival. Believe, you know, I, I've been through all that. And I'm telling you, that's not right. It's really not right. He's already given it to us. It's just that we're not stepping into it and operating in it. See, a lot of times we want to blame. We, I don't know why we do this. I do this. We want to blame somebody. Have you ever been in an argument? It's always somebody else's fault and everything. I mean... I've been there. I hate this. I've actually adjusted myself quite a bit. I'm actually pretty good at this. And now here I'm going to probably get whopped a good one. But I mean this. I don't try to look at right and wrong. I really try not to do that anymore. Because really what's happening is a person's just trying to justify themselves. And I want you to know that because of what Jesus Christ has done... There's no justification for your actions or your performance. Everything has to be based on what he has done. Amen. What Christ has already done for you, not what he's going to do. It's up to you to receive what he's done. You know, I think sometimes we as Christians have a tough time receiving. You know, we keep trying to do it on our own, in our own way, and in our own concept of how we think it's supposed to be, and it has nothing to do how God wants it in your life, and it's really you're performing, and you don't even realize it. We do that by putting faith in what he's already accomplished. Mark 11. I want you to think about this. And I'm going to just sit here, and I'm going to, I want you to meditate on this. I've been meditating on this. God spoke this to me, and I'm like, man, that is so good. 
Mark 11, verse 22. It says, And Jesus answering, saying unto them, Have faith in God. Stop. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. I've been meditating on that over and over. For about two weeks, I've been meditating. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. I have faith in God. I believe that what He has done, what He's accomplished, I have faith in God. I have faith in God. Man, I'm, I'm going to eat on that. I'm going to sit there and think about that. Have faith in God. I've been sitting there just letting that, just, I've been just letting it just permeate me. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Not in what He can do, but what He's already done. Have faith in God and what He's already accomplished. Amen. Ephesians 1, 18 says this. We'll turn over there. Ephesians 1, 18. So we're trying to believe in God. We're trying working this thing out. But I want to show you this. I just love this. And he, he said it before. And I want you to read this. Ephesians says, The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. Who's calling? What are you going to know? What are you supposed to understand here? You're calling? His calling. Now I'm going to stretch you here. You ready for this? That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. Not your calling, His calling. What was He called to do? Man, this went off on me. I'm telling you, I thought, oh my goodness, I never thought of it like that before. What is his calling? What was he called to do? That's right. He came to destroy the works of the enemy. He came to die on a cross to get us redeemed, delivered, sanctified, prospered. Amen. Why aren't those things manifesting in our lives? You need to ask yourself that question. I'm, I, I want to see it. I want to see it not only in my life. I want to see it in all of us. I want to see us. My desire is for you to walk in that to the fullness of what he's done for us. Amen? See, when we get into the blame game, a lot of times we're blaming God and we don't even realize it when it's really your own fault. And I know we don't like to hear that, but it is the truth. God would never not do something for us. He's already accomplished it. There's a problem here. You either, you're either walking in unbelief or you don't have enough knowledge that there's no revelation. And, and if, until you get that enlightenment, until you get that revelation... You're going to still be in darkness. And my desire is for you to say, you know what? I've had enough of this. I am going to get before my Father, and I am going to, I'm going to sit, and I'm going to meditate on that word until it becomes real to me. That is the difference between a disciple and a believer. A believer is a person that knows, and they believe on the Lord Jesus but they never step into what he's done for them and start walking in it and operating in it. Ouch. You read what Jesus said about disciples. He said they got to continue therein. They continue in his word and they become. That's what it's about. It's the continuing. It's saying, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and I am going to see results in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. I am going to see that God's word says I am healed. I'm healed. And I'm going to stand and if I die, then I die. But I'm going to die believing that I'm healed by the stripes are laid upon Jesus. 
You know, there's reasons why, and I, I've listened to Womack, and this is one of the things. I never understood this. The best that God has for all of us is for each one of us to walk in that kind of thing in their lives. It's not to have some guy come up and work a miracle and you get healed. Now, it's okay to have that. But the best that God has is for you to walk in the fullness of what He's accomplished through His Son. Amen. I want to be one of those people. Amen. The same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ, do you believe that? The same Spirit lives in me, lives in you. The same Spirit. He paid a price. What His calling was and what it represents to, do, to us. We just say that we believe it. But do you really believe it? It's hard. It's tough sometimes. I know. I've been pulled through some man. But you know what? As, as Andrew says it, get your finger out of your mouth. You know, I, and I mean that. I sometimes you, it's tough to be a Christian. You get persecuted. You get beat down by where, where you're working at at times. You're, you know, the situations and the thing. And you know what? And then sometimes you feel like you're all alone, but you're not. You have, a, you have everybody here at least loves you and wants to be the, you know, at least help you. Amen. Because of Jesus, you know, it's about his calling, his anointing, his power, his blessing that's on our lives. Amen. That's who we really are. Now, you may not be thinking that's who I am, but you really are. I want to show you something that really just, you know, David's been talking about the spiritual world. And I want, I've I just been thinking about that a little bit. And I want to turn over to, hold on. I got it in another place. I want to look real quick. Well, I'll just wait on it. I'm not very good with my phone. I've had it already up. Do you remember when King, when the the prophet, the enemies encamped around the, where the prophet is, and he said, Lord, open up his eyes so he can see what's going on out there? Just because you can't see germs, do you believe that they're there? Amen? They're there. You know, there's radio waves flowing through here right now. We can't see them, but they are here. Amen? You know, the Bible says that in Hebrews, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We all know that scripture. I know it. But have you really meditated on it? I've been meditating on it. Here's something I never thought of, I, and I want you, I'm just going to share with what's, what, what God shows me, all right? Evidence can make you believe that something happened or something is true. You know, when a lawyer is presenting his case, he presents evidence to the jury or to the judge, and then there's counter evidence, you know, all that's going on. Well, I'm asking, what's your evidence that to have faith in God. What is your evidence? What do you base that on? Have you ever seen Him? Some people get to. I haven't. Have you ever seen God? Have you ever seen sin? Do you know what sin looks like? you ever seen it? But you see the effect of it. How many of you... This, I, I just want you to think about this. This is what He said to me this morning. He said to me, he says, when Jesus came into your life, did things start to change? That is evidence that God is real. Amen. It's evidence that he is real. Because I know when he came into my life, I mean, I could cuss the wallpaper off the wall. I like to fight. I like to drink, smoke dope. I did a lot of other things that I'm not going to talk about. But I was a hellion. 
And when he came into my life, things started changing. And it was like, wow. Do you allow, does the natural truth dominate you? Or does spiritual truth dominate you? You have to make up your mind. Amen. I mean, you got to make up your mind. What is it going to be? Are you going to believe his word? Because I'm going to tell you this. You may be sick. And in the real world, you're fighting sickness. But I want you to realize that the spirit that lives in you is healed 100%. Completely healed. And it's not wrong for you to say, I am healed by the stripes that were laid upon Jesus Christ. That is the truth. It trumps the other one. Amen? It's the trump card. And you have the trump card. The reason we don't get the result? Unbelief. It's number one. You feed yourself unbelief. You sit here and it's being fed to you through media, through whatever. You got it. I'm telling you, if you really want what God has for you, you're going to have to change your lifestyle. I'm, I mean that. And I'm not saying if you don't want it, then don't do it. But don't complain that you're not getting results because it's your own fault. And I know you don't like to hear that, but it's the truth. I, I know that from my own life. I look at me and I'm going, man, I want to see this happen. I want to see when I say happens. I just had that happen yesterday, two days ago. My brother-in-law, my sister-in-law called. My brother-in-law fell and broke his rib and he's got blood on the lung. Very serious. As soon as they called, Linda told me, I, I prayed. And I said, lungs, in the name of Jesus, I command that blood to stop. And then I commanded those ribs to be healed in Jesus' name, and I commanded that pain to go. Got a good report. Blood stopped. I wasn't the only one doing this. My wife was doing it also. But what I'm getting at is I'm trying to train my heart to believe that whatever comes out of my mouth happens. Jesus went about, he called the fig tree, he looked at it, he cursed that thing from the roots, and it happened. We've trained ourselves to not believe what we say. Power of life and death is in the power of the tongue. If you got problems, it's your own fault. I'm not going around going, oh, I'm cursing this person. Now, you can. I got people that I'm dealing with sometimes, and I want to go, man, I, I capture that thought in the name of Jesus when they say these words. They say words over you. People say words over you. I, I did this. I listened to this series, and I would recommend it. The Creative Power of Words by Andrew. And I jammed on it for about three months. And man, I'll tell you what, I never thought of it. But you know what God had showed me was he said, you know, we as Christians, we were created by words. And that's why they bother you. When somebody says, you fat thing, what? You calling me fat? You want a fat lip? You know what I'm saying? Or you ugly thing, or you, you know what I'm talking about. You can't tell me it doesn't bother you a little bit. I mean, Vic was telling me about a situation he was in. And the guy was kind of being, up, you know, obnoxious or whatever. And, you know, he, he was going to deal with it the wrong way. Thank God he didn't because his wife kept saying, Vic, Vic, <laughs> Vic, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Second Kings 6, 11 through 14 is that example of the spirit world. So if you were looking for that scripture. By trying to be real, you know, we, we see in, in, in the church and in, I mean, in society, everybody wants this real. 
you know, they want real. Well, there's nothing more real than the spiritual world. It's more real than the physical world that you're living in. But because you haven't tapped into it, doesn't make it not real. It's you got to tap into it. You got to train yourself to live that way and think that way. Amen. And that's how this operates. Are we going to be perfect at it? I am already. No, I'm kidding. No, you're not. You're going to mess up. But the point that I'm getting at is at least try. You know, if I'm going to shoot to Mars and try to hit something to Mars, I only make it to the moon. Well, at least I made it to the moon, you know. Amen? We're trying. We're going. We're going to move. We're going to, we're going to operate in this. You know, we're going to have faith in God. Let me ask you a question. Uh, I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to. Because this is how I learn. How do you react when you hear, the market is down and we're headed into a recession? What comes at you? Fear? Feel that? It's flu season. Oh my gosh, it's flu season. I better get my shot. Okay. Amen. What else is out there that you hear? What's the thought that goes through your mind? I know. It happens to me too. <laughs> I say no, and, but you know, it's, it's the enemy and how he operates. And that's not what God's word says. His word says, I've already accomplished prosperity. I've already accomplished healing, deliverance, redemption. What else do you need? Well, we got to go pick that fruit. We got to go get it. We got to change our thinking and allow our spirit to affect our soul and our body. That's how it works. Am I perfect at it? Man, I'll tell you what, I've come a long way. I'm telling you. I really have. I mean it. I have come a long way. Amen. So I do know there's hope for the rest of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I got the last laugh on that now. <laughs> In the spirit, you're, you're healed, and you're not lying to yourself when you say those things. You know, the enemy used to tell me that. That when I'm sitting there sniffling and I'm coughing and all that, and me going, I'm healed by the stripes laid upon Jesus, the devil goes, you lying thing. You ever had that happen? Yes or no? I mean, yeah. The point I'm making is, is that I have. I mean, devil's telling me, you're not healed. Look at you. Look at you, you know. And all, bless God, I'm healed by the, you know. And he's sitting there telling me, Boy, you're a lying thing. But his, the word says my spirit is completely, 100%, totally healed. 100%. That's not a lie. And as I meditate on that, and as I meditate on that, see, I don't think the church, I don't think you do enough meditating on the word. You know, I think a lot of times we as Christians... We have our 30-minute prayer time or our 30-minute reading the Word time. And you need to meditate for hours and hours and hours and hours and allow that Word to start changing your thinking. I actually love it. I mean it. I love it. I may not get to read, but I do get to meditate. And I will sit there and I will think about it and I will think about it and I will mull it and I'll meditate on it and I'll meditate on it and I'll meditate on it and I'll keep saying that I have faith in God. 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 And pretty soon, I know that I've got it. And then I start rejoicing. And then I start being thankful. Because when you start understanding who and what he's done for you, that is the result of 
confidence. That is the result of knowing who we are. Because then, praise. Because it's yours. You're being thankful. If you're not being thankful, you don't have it yet. Doesn't mean you can't get it. Amen. But you can. See, the great thing about being a Christian, I just love God about this. You can always change. I love that. I mean, I just thought, you know, God, you are so good. You could, even when we're, it doesn't matter how bad you're messing up. It's okay. Mess up. You can change. He can fix it. Amen. I love that. I just think, God, you are so good. I love that. You can, I used to not, I mean this. I was not a person that walked around confessing scripture. I never did that. I didn't think I had to. I thought it was a joke because I thought it was performance. And I said, I'm not going to perform. I will not do it. No, that's not who I am. And you know what? I still don't perform, but you know what I do? I do speak it. I do take it and I declare it. And I do it not in front of people. I try not to do that because that's my own personal time with Him. That's my prayer time. Amen? And I take that word seriously. And I say, I am healed by the stripes you laid upon Jesus. I say, I am prospered because His word says that I'm prospered as I meditate in His word day and night. See, we want the thing, but we don't want to do the thing to get it. I guarantee you, if every one of you for a year would meditate in the word, you're going to get what you've been believing for. It will change your life. It can't stop. The word of God is impregnated. It is full of grace. It's beautiful. And as you meditate in it, it just it just starts and it engulfs you. And it sits there and it starts and then it just starts changing your life. And you're you're just like, what happened? That's what the word does. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Rejoice. Amen. Rejoice. You guys can do this. I believe in you. Amen. I want to see. My desire is to see. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing this in my spirit. <laughs> For you to go forth in power. For you to lay your hands on the sick and they recover. Wheelchairs. Deaf ears. Blind eyes. Amen. Get a vision of that. And then don't let go of it. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the veterans, Father. Thank you for those that have served our country, Lord. I give you praise, Father, for that in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, you just bless them especially today in the name of Jesus. Thank you for everyone that's here, Lord. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen.